Hello, Montclair Film Festival fans, everyone out there. Uh, Clayton Davis, Film Awards Editor at Variety, here hanging out with the cast, crew, and all the good people that are involved with Palm Springs. Here with us is Andy Samberg. Yes. Krista Miliotti. Hi. That's Andy. Andy, how do you say it? A Miliotti. Oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Our director, Max Barbacow. And our screenwriter, Andy Ciara. Well, what are you guys doing here? Just hanging out, just it's walking by and just thought you'd jump into a Zoom? We're actually all in the same house. We just chose different rooms. Who's got the best room? Me. Got it. <laughs> Pretty clearly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have to start with this question because it's just probably the most important thing to me. Uh, where, who got that 69 cents overage at Sundance as the largest <laughs> buy in Sundance history where this film screened and was purchased for a record-breaking $17.5 million and 69 cents. You're saying who pocketed the change? <laughs> I want who had the 69 cents. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I think it's Akiva. Akiva, who is a, a, help, a producer on the film. Got it. Um his mind's in the gutter, man. And uh, plus, he's not here, so let's throw him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, listen, I, 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 I've been talking a lot about this movie, and I'm a big fan. And one of the one of the great things about it is how original it is for such a familiar type of story structure. Um, Andy at uh, Ciara, I have to to go by the last names here, yeah. so not to convince you guys, not to mix yeah. you guys up. Uh, Andy Sarah, when you started writing the script, um, how much of that comedic element, but also balanced with all, a lot of the dramatic hefts that the film entails, how much of that was inserted from the jump and what was your uh, game plan? I mean, it was, it, was always a, it was always meant to be a kind of a silly absurdist existential comedy thing it just it got a lot funnier uh when when andy came on other andy came on board um for the better so i don't know it was like sitting somewhere around 60 percent comedy 40 percent drama I, I guess <laughs> and then he they, they helped take it to uh you know i guess an 80 20. i don't i'm i'm kind of pulling these numbers i don't know where i i yeah Roughly that. I don't know if that answers the question. I mean, you're obviously the accountant for everyone on the, on the film because you get to do how everything splits I mean, up. So from, from, from the beginning, uh, when, when Max and I first uh, went out to Palm Springs for this kind of lost weekend uh, five years ago, it was a very, very PG lost weekend because I'm terrified of hard okay. drugs. Um, uh, we, we always were trying to get that, like, that laugh cry dynamic where we we're, we're, were always aiming for uh before we we even knew what this movie was going to be we we're just like as long as you can you know try to laugh and maybe cry in it then i don't know that that, that was kind of what we we're aiming for the, the whole time so for you two as a writer writer director pairing uh both your first feature uh screen screenplay and directorial efforts which makes, which I always say makes me nervous of like, what's going to happen when you guys like are let off the reins and are able to just run amok because you run amok in this movie. Um, <laughs> We're probably going to fail. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Max, I mean, how, how intimidating was it to helm the project, especially when these two big stars come on board and say, yeah, I'll do it. I think, I mean, we just got super lucky that we met um, Andy Sandberg first and the Lonely Island first. And immediately it was clear after that first meeting, because you go in and the script existed, it was written. We weren't sure whether it was going to be a thing that I was going to be allowed to go direct and stay on. And we met these guys and they, and Becky Sloboda, other amazing producer, and they immediately saw what was cool about it what we wanted it to be kind of the best version of it too. And we're, I think appreciated that we were buds and wanted to go make this together and kind of protected us while we went to go make it through kind of how crazy 
the movie making process can be. So it was a, a meet, it was intimidating for sure. Cause you don't want to mess something up that you care so much about, but like both, both these actors. And I think every department had on board too, like everybody was a true creative partner. Um, and just put, I think everybody else in a position to succeed and do their best work. So it was, there's put a lot of pressure on myself to, to make it as good as the script was, but, um, I just felt so much support all the way through the process. It was an incredible first experience for sure. Uh, Andy Sandberg. So you have uh, well adjusted roots in TV like SNL and Brooklyn Nine Nine and a lot of other great uh, classic uh, films. My one of my favorites, obviously, is Pop Star. Never stop, never stopping, and I will roll through that <laughs> till the day I die. Um, but I've spoken a lot lately about. Uh, genre bias uh, regarding comedies right. that they get, they don't, you know, as a film awards editor, the guy who like touts Oscar contenders, right. I have long stood on this the birthday pedestal, whatever it is, uh, saying comedies can offer more than just like your fart jokes and your butt laughs and all that stuff. Palm Springs, there is a dramatic heft that is in there. It's embedded within laughs, but you can find it. And there's a lot in the performances that you and Kristen both discover. A lot of this is stretches your legs out as an actor, probably the most I've ever seen. Did you feel that challenge upon yourself when you signed on? Yes, definitely. Um, and I will also say, you know, part of the reason I think everyone was so drawn to this script and to the, the vision for it that Andy and Max had is exactly what you're getting at. It was, it was really funny, but there's pathos to it. There's real human beings at the center of it, even though the, the premise is very heightened and crazy and sci-fi and, you know, all these things that I also love. And there's a lot of like straight up set piece comedy stuff in it that, you know, we know because we had one screening at Sundance does get laugh out loud, you know, reactions. There's still a lot, a lot going on beneath the surface. That's about, you know, what we go through as people and the, the habits and the cycles we fall into and the ability or inability to forgive oneself for mistakes. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff working on a deeper level. And I feel like the fact that it was working on both, of those, um, it, it split a lot of different genres for me. And you, that's usually a huge risk, but that's also what really excited me about it. And I think in this case, at least speaking personally, I feel like we, we got what we were going for. Awesome. Uh, Kristen, let's just get out of the way now, right? I'm just gonna get out nice and early in, in, in this conversation. So you sign on to star opposite Andy Samberg. And at this point, have you been familiar with any of his previous works like Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, or Hot Rod, or, uh, you know, Celeste and Jesse Forever? Oh. Um, well, let's, yeah, let's get into it. I had seen, <laughs> I've seen him in Celeste and Jesse Forever. Um, I have not seen Pop Star, Never Stop Stopping, and I have not seen Hot Rod, but I'm extremely familiar with Ross Trent, Shai Rani. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so not his most personal works, just like, you know, <laughs> everything else. Got absolutely. it. Jizzed in my pants. I'm on a yeah. boat. Um, yeah. 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 I'm on the ground. Yeah. That's not a cake. This is a cell phone. That's not, what is it? <laughs> it's not my, it's not my dad. It's a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Is there a cake in it though? There is. Yeah. Happy birthday to the ground. That's right. Happy birthday to the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to get nominated for everything. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Andy, you know there's someone standing behind the camera with a cue card, right? Just like holding up titles of your stuff. <laughs> yeah, just my so, IMDb page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but now, serious. I, but, I, but everything I, the, I, I, <laughs> what I, I know I haven't seen Foster, I never stopped stopping. But, no, no, but it's um, fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, so honest I'm, question now, Kristen. The honest question is, you you coming on to start uh, opposite Andy Samberg, um, and we've loved you with roles in The Wolf of Wall Street, How I Met Your Mother, obviously, uh, and just just being like this beacon of of light for the industry and its future. How did that feel coming into it? Uh, yeah. First of all, who paid you to say that? <laughs> 
<laughs> and you give me twenty dollars. Exactly. <laughs> give me sixty nine cents. That's what happened. <laughs> you got I, dropped, I dropped a twomp on it. <laughs> what are you saying? I, I slid him a twomp. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, how did it? The, the, how did it feel like to sign off? I was so excited, right? That was the question. I just got so distracted by the bit that I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Hi, you can, you can say talk about how we had a wonderful meeting and we liked each other and wanted. Don't to put words in my mouth. <laughs> I don't come to your house and tell you how to answer questions. You absolutely do. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was yeah. Uh, we met uh, not about this film, or at least I didn't know that it was about this film. Um, we were kind of creeping on you. Right, I know that now, but I didn't. Yeah, know yeah, we were. And we. <laughs> Got along so well, me and him, and Becky Sloviter, our producer, was so wonderful. And then it all just sort of like came together. And I was so thrilled because we had such a great time in that meeting. And then, you know, I read the script and I loved it so, so much. And I thought it was so special and like nothing that I'd really read before. And um, I was thrilled. I mean, I don't know. I, I know that's like a pretty like cut and dry answer, but it's. Yeah. Uh, Max, I feel like the hardest thing to decide in this film, as I was watching it, had to have been what Hawaiian shirt does Andy Samberg wear throughout the whole movie? How, tell me about that, your costume designer's got to get the, the credit, but like, how did we land on that shirt? And tell me if it still has it today. <laughs> I don't know if you have it. When the, when the movie came out, they sent, like, Hulu sent out a bunch of swag, not swag bags, but swag coolers, which is pretty cool, with uh, little hankies with pattern, like, part of the shirt pattern, which is, which is nice. So maybe we have that. But um, we just tried on a lot of shirts. Colin Wilkes is our costume designer. She was she was great. Uh, she came with a lot of choices. And then it came down to two shirts. And I think I honestly wanted a different one. And Andy, you just were like, no, I'm going to wear this one and convince me of it. And, it's, and it, it, was, Wait, it was, it was, he pulled rank. He just like, no, it's way, it's like, it's with anything too. Are. Like with, with Kristen's outfit, with anything, it's like you want everybody to feel comfortable. Um, and it came down to like a red one, a red one and a blue one. Yeah. And we were in, and, and, and we were just constantly talking about it. I think we had like gotten the night to make the decision. And, um, a lot of it was just, I mean, it's a, like you're saying, it's a hero outfit. It's a big decision, right? You're kind of playing each scene through your head and what that would look like and how that would show up on a, um, you know, in the desert landscape and uh, what would pop appropriately. Cause that was like a big thing that we were always talking about with this movie. We were going to be shooting it really fast, but like the one thing we could control was color control um, throughout when you're shooting on location and what you can add to it and what colors meant. Um, and we just kind of arrived at the, at the red shirt. I knew that our, wonderful DP, Q really wanted the blue. I didn't know that Max also wanted the blue. I remember us talking about the, the merits of both, but just so everyone uh, checking this out can see, here's the orange that we went with. Mm -hmm. Is it really bright? You can see it. Anyway, yep. that's that. But then this was the, this was almost my outfit in the movie. Yeah, we're not, no, we're, no, no contest. <laughs> we, if we, it would have, it would have been clear if we had waited like a year and a half to make the choice and shot it now. Like I, that would have been a very clear, clear choice there. I just had. To, I will say to that. But <laughs> I was in blue. Say what? Because I, I also was in blue. Yeah, that too. That another factor was Kristen was in blue. Hold, hold, wait, Andy Sandberg, hold on. Yeah. Could yeah. you help? You, you held up a picture of yourself with a beard. So can we address the beard? Ooh. Was that on the table? <laughs> The That's beard so was discussed. I was very yeah. pro beard. I was. We were pro all pro beard. Yeah. Who, yeah. who, who was not pro beard? Hey, who, who was it? Kiva. <laughs> it was the. It was people to do with uh, money. Okay. <laughs> the money maker. Okay. The, the actual decision maker. <laughs> the people with the money are the ones that will tell you you don't have a good beard, and that's final. Huh. <laughs> But I will say, uh, after I shaved, my wife said to me, yeah, you had to shave. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. Anyway, um, it was cool, too. So uh, I, I think, uh, Andy Ciara, I need to ask you now. So you're constructing this script from somewhere in your house at some point. How long did you work on the script? 
uh, be- before I got to Andy and Lonely Island, it was just under just under three years, I'd say. So it's like I would I would uh, work on it, and I was working on another show at, at the time, so I'd put it away for a bit, come back to it. Uh, the script would inevitably change a bunch because of what was going on in our lives. And then uh, the, the the time loop aspect of it all didn't even come in, I think, until like maybe a year and a half into writing it. Um, but like most of it was kind of born out of these these therapy sessions between Max and myself where we would just uh, kind of just be open and vulnerable with each other. And then I would take whatever we talked about and see if there was a story there. And then that led to a a cave and a wedding and a time loop eventually and dinosaurs. So. Uh, um, Max, I, I have to ask every director this guy. I feel like there's a director's cut. How much longer is is it and what is in it that we didn't get to see? <laughs> is there is there more Peter Gallagher uh, and Andy Samberg? That's what I need to know. <laughs> of that love affair. That was, that was so fun. That was like, I think, one take that we just rolled and did that a bunch of times. So we could have... <laughs> There's there's definitely a long string out of that. Um, we didn't end up losing that much. We moved some stuff around, and it all just kind of we cut to the bone at a certain point, and it just got way better. But like, um, there's not there there are parts within scenes that we lost that honestly I don't miss anymore. That was tough at at the time, but it, it's way better. It it really is pretty close to. Um, that's what I'm, I'm pretty proud of. I think the movie that we all set out to make is kind of what what's out there, which I know doesn't happen a lot of the time and is a tribute to everybody understanding, like we've spoken about what the best version of the movie was, you know? Cool. Um, it's always an appropriate time to talk crap about the people that aren't here with us today. So I thought <laughs> we could talk about how they got involved and how terrible they were. J.K. Simmons, Academy Award winner, oh. J.K. Simmons. <laughs> where, where did he come from? This up and comer. <laughs> um, I was friendly with JK because I was in a movie called I Love You Man with him. He played my dad. Oh, yeah. um, so we had stayed in touch um, and we'd see each other here and there and he would decimate me with his dry wit and I would take it and delight in it. Um, and so when we were talking about Roy's I was like, well, I could ask JK directly. That's one of those easy ones where I actually already have his number. <laughs> and was it via like, text? I think maybe an email, maybe an email or a text. We text though. Oh. We do text. I do have his number. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we there was no one we wanted over JK for the part. He's exactly that. He threads the needle of he can be terrifying, he can be really funny, and he can also break your heart. And I think the character of Roy beautifully has all three of those things. Um, so he was our, our number one on that, on that one as well. And we just got lucky that he loved it. Who gave him the training on the crossbow? I think he came in prepped. He, he came <laughs> correct. That guy came in correct with that. Was it his, it was his crossbow? He was a guy. Just around. If it wasn't his, he made it his. I mean, the guy, <laughs> uh, Peter Gallagher, where, where did this guy come from? It's, it's, it's so weird that you got like it's just the the assembly of this ensemble <laughs> is just so random, but it's so amazing at the same time. I just need to know how this happened. I think Gallagher was brought up by our casting director Allison Jones, who is a legend in her own right, of course. And uh, you know, she put together a short list of of ideas. Wasn't that how it happened? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we all flipped for Gallagher. I mean, me, I, I just am obsessed with Gallagher from the OC. Um. But I know he also like you know has been nominated for Oscars and stuff. But the OC, <laughs> Sandy Cohen, um, I just I just love him. I know everyone as soon as we heard that idea, we're like, "Ooh, do you think he would do it?" There was a lot of that on this movie. Do you think they'd do it? <laughs> and then, and then you start, just starting get with Crystal, they say yes. <laughs> yeah, we just got people just kept saying yes, and I was like, "Man, this is a good script." <laughs> If, if it makes you feel better, Peter Gallagher has not been nominated for an Oscar, so it's fine. Like, I think he has. He has not. I am the film awards editor. This is part of the <laughs> I get yelled at if I don't know this. Next slide is a video tape? Nope. He's um, nominated. Mr. Deeds? Nope. <laughs> no American Beauty. No Burlesque. No While You Were Sleeping. None of those things. Oh, man. 
I've seen I it multiple times. Uh, uh, but how many times have you seen Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping? Uh, yeah, how many uh, times? How do you, yeah, I've seen it zero at this point, but like <laughs> song and I do have a pretty packed schedule at the, t at the moment. Oh. <laughs> where I may have pockets where I can see it, but at this time it is on right. Thank you. Great. Uh, <laughs> that was Kristen's publicist. <laughs> but dude, those cue cards are working. It's like she's working. <laughs> she's working. She's working. She's working. Yeah. Great. I remain a um, big fan, except it's just not a match at this time, unfortunately. Man. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so Max, then you start fishing for more Oscar nominees and you were like, uh, June Squibb. Yeah, let's, let's real her. Of course. Oh. You know, why not? Of course. Um, Andy, if you say, Sandberg, if you say you had her phone number, I'm going to know you're lying. So I how, did know Squib. I knew Squib because I did this weird thing on HBO and she played the Queen of England for us. It was <laughs> a delight. And we knew her because she was in Nebraska with Forte and they hit it off and were buddies. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I had a, an in on Squib. But again, I mean, national treasure. Sure. Six degrees of separation. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, right. uh, Chris, have you ever seen Seven Days in Hell? Um, oh my god, so sorry. I have to take this. Uh, <laughs> what? Who <laughs> is it? It's, it's, um, it is the... Publicist. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be... There's a patient on way and I got to just... Oh, can you hold on, Clayton? I'm sure. <laughs> You guys should move on to a different question. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just mute it. Mute her. Just mute it. <laughs> Listen, next question's for you, though. Let, 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 let's just move into, into, the, into, the, into the circle here. Yeah. So I am very taken by your performance because there is a arc to it that first looks like I'm the girl who just doesn't care and I'd rather be at another venue than at this wedding venue. Yeah. And then it quickly, and without giving anything away, just in case people haven't seen it, uh, then it quickly turns into shame. And then it becomes, in, and then it turns into kind of this YOLO mentality of like, <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Uh, how did you find Sarah in that? Um, I think that is also such, I mean, it's such a testament to the script as well. Like she was so... Um, to me, the reason that she does all the things she does, it was so clear, like it was so easy to sort of, she was like so, such a human. Um, she was such a like flawed human person. And so um, I, I don't know how to answer that question better than that. It was, it was definitely there. And I, of course, like have my own theories about the stuff in her life that like you don't find out in the movie. I have like a whole idea of, but you guys don't need to know about it. <laughs> I, I will also say Kristen is modest you know she she doesn't just show up and like knock out the lines there were a lot of discussions between the four of us and some rehearsals and anytime it felt like she wasn't tracking it she raised her hand and we really talked it through and you know we made adjustments both beforehand and on the fly and Max was super malleable and you know there were a lot of pivots that that crystallized it even more and that was kind of the mo on this movie from the jump like everyone was doing it because they really liked it you know it was really an indie no one was like getting a fatty check or so we thought mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but it was like we all just really wanted it to exist and for it to be a, the good version of it and we all believed in the tone that andy and max had kind of conjured from the jump and all of i mean there was also such like enormous care taken um in those rehearsals and in those discussions and then when we were filming it too and i think that is what makes it so special like yes it's funny yes there's a sci-fi element like yes there are these moments of like pain and vulnerability but like these are two fully realized people and that's like what makes you so invested mm -hmm. um and it was a very like a very collaborative effort max i heard this rumor that the movie shot in 21 days is that <laughs> is that true yeah, around there, like 21, 22. We had a couple couple weather situations and some, right. a weird and half day trip. changed, obviously. Yeah, a lot of time for that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know Andy Sandberg was such like, you know, a you know, prima donna that he just needed the <laughs> white shirt for himself, you know? Yeah, I needed that red shirt, man. <laughs> <laughs> red shirt. <laughs> 
Um, how, how, I mean, listen, first movie, three weeks, finish this now. Is it like do or die? Or is it like, hopefully this all works out? What, what, what did that feel like? And Andy Ciara, please contribute to this too. I'm, I assume you were there for that part of the collaboration. I, th I think it helped. And the reason why the script was so solid too is because we had, uh, it felt almost like the movie would play. So a lot of the, the kind of the rhythm of it and even certain cut points were kind of those choices were made beforehand. And we had lived with it for so long that it was easy to kind of, um, th I had the opportunity to think about it and how I wanted to go about making it, which was just kind of like keep it super grounded because the premise was pretty heightened and, and the emotion should take center stage. So because of that, it was kind of a straightforward approach to shooting it um, that kind of opened up as the, as the emotional journey kind of progressed. But it like, we got, again, I, I'm not exaggerating with our two lead actors who created partners and everybody who worked on the movie, there was this shorthand because they understood what the, what the tone was. We just got really lucky. Our DP also operated the movie cues. Amazing. Like she, everyone had the same twisted sense of humor. Everybody kind of knew what the emotional core of the movie was. So because of that, you, uh, you know what you're after and you could kind of skip a lot of the discussions that you think you're going to have to have and prep and stuff like describing, you know, Kind of what the sensibility is, um, so that helped. The, the shoot just flew by; it was crazy like that. It w it went so quickly, and I'm super proud of the fact that we got everything and more. Um, and yeah, I, I, it was such a blur. It was it was insane, but and, and it, it felt like we were doing good stuff. Right? You guys filmed in Palm Springs? Never, never, <laughs> never, not, not once. We were yeah. all desperate to, but we couldn't make it work because we got the California rebate and had to stay within the. Uh, the 10 mile zone or 30 mile zone or whatever it's called. It was yeah, so Palm, Palmdale, baby. Palmdale and uh, <laughs> Agua Dulce. That was the challenge, was bring the Palm Springs energy to Palmdale. That was that was the big thing. You guys, well, people that live in Palm Springs correctly take issue with it not feeling Palm Springsy enough. Um, <laughs> and to them, we do apologize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kristen, you were gonna say something? I was gonna say that like, just to add on like the collaborative spirit we're all talking about of like how invested everyone was in this from like every single department head, every crew member, like also because of that madcap schedule, we were constantly grabbing things like the tattooing. Yeah. We like grabbed as the sun was setting, like we, there was like always like we would have an idea that we would like try and get like it was madness, but it was also like I think some of that energy also translates into the film in a way that is like I find very magical. Agreed. Do you guys actually draw the tattoos yourselves on each other? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, but <laughs> that was Galaxy, our makeup artist. But I mean, we, right? Am I right? I it know was we, Galaxy, but in, in our defense, Galaxy really insisted and was super hyped to do it. <laughs> the best. He did that in no time. She did the, the fork in, in Tyler Hecklin's face oh, and Abe's face in like no time. She was uh, like, that's what we're talking about. Just a twisted sense of humor. It's like, no, no, we can do this. Let's do it. Let's get it. Like, we need to get this. That's the best. Yeah, people what, were excited was, about in introducing new bits and new ideas as we went. Yeah, it was it was rad. The yeah. art department uh, had like a running a running alts list of uh, stuff to instruments to torture Niles with for Roy, which was <laughs> su super fun. Like yeah. it was it was the best. Uh, Andy Cr, question for you. There is, I wonder if there was an exploration of a different ending that isn't as pretty or heartwarming there that you were trying to look for? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'd say the ending was, was always on a, a spectrum of sorts uh, between like, it's a very clear cut answer to way too ambiguous. And we always, from the first time we met with uh, Andy and Becky and Keeve, we, uh, we knew we wanted to kind of keep it somewhere in the center of that spectrum to keep it ambiguous. But like you kind of, you can, you get out whatever you're, you're it's, the, the ending is more of a reflection on, on, on your view of the world. I'd say um, I, I know that all of us have our own beliefs as to uh, what actually happens at the ending. And uh, like what, what the, to, to me, the emotional ending, all that really matters is they walk in the cave together. Everything else is just like a, the cherry on top. And I think like that cherry on top is um, where I think I know the four of us have a different interpretation. Um, and, you know, all I will say is I think everything 
from the production design to costumes to set deck to drink choices. Um, it's all there to put that to point toward one ending. Uh, however, uh, <laughs> if you just watch it from a step back without reading too much into it, um, then it is ambiguous. You can just come up with your own ending. Where's that house? Joshua Tree. That was the half day we spent Palm Springs adjacent in Joshua Tree. I had a, I had a buddy, a, my brother's buddy saw the movie when he was staying in that house for the weekend, not knowing that I was involved in it. And I was like, what? Yeah. Sent my brother an email. It was, it's so creepy. Was and you know, it's now the Airbnb. Someone sent me like the Airbnb link has like the still of us shooting there as, a, oh, as an advertisement oh. for the, yeah. That's the so sky, cool. the Skywalker house. For your friend that's like watching the movie, like flight plan while you're on a plane, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, important question, I think. And Kristen, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this over to you. Let's talk about that choreography. Mm. What do you want to know? How did it come to be? <laughs> and who took to it better or easier than the other? <laughs> I would say that we're both, we're both really good movers. Right. <laughs> We're both really good movers. We have a lot of passion for movement. Yeah. <laughs> and we're hard workers. And who turned the right direction the most times soonest? Ooh. Doesn't matter at this point. It was you. <laughs> they're, being, they're, being, they're being super modest. They learned that like probably over the course of a day, a week before yeah. we shot, and then showed up and did it first thing in the morning together. Like they killed it. They were incredible. It was a great thing to watch. photographer too, who Thanks, was man. really able to work with our skill set. And also the, the dance was the first thing that we rehearsed together. And it was like this incredible icebreaker of like learning this ridiculous choreography. Um, and then we would practice it like on the side of the road whenever we could, because we knew yeah. we had like not a ton of time to film the actual sequence. And we had to like nail it. And those, those, those rehearsals made it into the movie too. That I think Spart, you guys came with that idea to shoot those moments of you kind of figuring out that dance that, that, that we then cut through the montage. So it's right. a cool discovery where you're like, what are they up to? Oh, that's, yeah. that's what they're up to. Yeah. I'm trying to convince my wife to dress for her and I to dress up like that for Halloween. And she is not, yeah. she's not, she's not, she's not complying. The dance is, is learnable. <laughs> I want. I just want to wear the outfits. I just want to do the outfits. That's it. Like, yeah. You know, it's it's an Andy Samberg Halloween theme I have going the last few years. So I kind of want to keep that moving forward. I can't tell you how flattered I am. I and mean, thank you for all. I, did, I, I, I told you before the before we started uh, filming that you're the last concert I went to for the Lonely Island before uh, the quarantine shutdown at South Street Seaport. So when you guys are ready to go on tour again, I'll I'll do it. You know, I'll go back. <laughs> Um, actually, Andy, interesting questions. Uh, Sandberg, was there ever an exploration of doing a song for the movie that was like more seriously toned than your <laughs> other notable works? Um, no, no, and it's not, uh, it was like a nice rarity for me where it never even came up. No one was like, maybe <laughs> was you're like waiting for it. <laughs> Look, if you're good at fake raps, people want you to fake rap. Um, but no, I mean, the only thing that actually came up was the idea of Kristen singing and playing piano and stuff because everyone knew how incredible she was and thought that that actually was maybe feasible. But it was really just something someone offhandedly said at Video Village and never really had any traction. Where would it have gone? Hmm? Where would it have gone? Exactly. <laughs> Good credits. <laughs> it, was, it was a strange pitch. <laughs> yeah yeah um let's, uh i always like to say talk about like those those times on the sets that like are only for you guys but we just can only hear about it through your through your words right now what was like the funniest moment you guys had on set who like fell who like had like the moment of moments that when you think of palm springs filming this moment sticks out forever I mean, I have one personally. Go which, ahead. Uh, when we were shooting that campfire scene, which is a very long <clears throat> and eventually dramatic scene, um, we shot it over the course of two nights because the first night we had to stop because there was a sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the last night of shooting. 
we were back onto that scene. I was really in it and I don't get in it often. I mean, I was in it. Hmm. And uh, Kristen pulls the little plastic hook hand out from under the blank warming blanket she's got on her lap and just gently caresses my face right in the middle of the scene and hadn't told me that that was coming. Um, and I, I tried to figure out, we, we all looked at the footage. It was un, unsalvageable for the movie, but it was one of the hardest. <laughs> it did make me laugh about as hard as anything the whole time. I'll say that. Right. Yeah. I can imagine, that was one of, I think that's my probably, I mean, I had a, I, I feel like my memory of shooting this movie is a lot of laughing, a lot of sandstorms, a lot of running and a lot of laughing. And, um, but also that scene was like my favorite scene to shoot as well. It was like this wonderful, special little world. It was. Was, was it ungodly hot when you were shooting? Cause it seems like, it, it, I don't know why every scene just, especially when you guys are out in the sun, it looks like it's like 120 degrees. Oh, that's so good. Color correction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the day it got hot, but at night it was like so cold. It was so cold. It was yeah. Wait, cold. Cold, cold, like California cold or like East Coast cold? Good California. Cold, Chris. California okay. cold. Yeah. It was not cold. Okay, got <laughs> it. Thank you. I will say, being in summertime clothes in California, desert cold was pretty gnarly. Yes. Like desert conditions are desert like. <laughs> What'd you say? Desert conditions, they're desert like. Yeah, they're brutal. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And uh, Ciara, your favorite moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, uh, com comedy moment, I was the uh, very, very last thing that was shot was uh, <laughs> 30 minutes of, of Jenna Friedman <laughs> giving Andy a hand job in the back of a car. And, <laughs> and that was, uh, I mean, she just kept on, kept on going, just nothing that was in the script, just saying like making up stories about what happened to the car and who she hit with this car. Uh, and so that was, that was great. And it was, it was nice because I, what came right before that was that whole campfire scene. And that was the moment where on the other side, the not comedic side where I'm the first take that Andy did, I just like, I grabbed Max and a little teary eyed and was like, Oh, this is, he's fucking perfect. Uh, and that, I only say him because we were shooting his side first. Uh, and <laughs> Kristen was great too, but she had already raised the bar so high. And in that scene, Andy, Andy finally made it. He met, finally got met, up to your, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 you know, that's good. That's good. He, he's fine. That Andy Sandberg is going places. Let me tell you. Uh, and Max, what was, what was your favorite? I mean, directing, God, you saw every frame. Yeah, no, I loved, I kind of loved the moments where um, kind of in between the, a lot, like it, there's a moment that's actually in the movie when Connor O'Malley goes into the bathroom and surprises uh, uh, Misty and Trevor uh, when that hanky panky is going on with a blindfold on and Andy and Kristen are laughing. And it, it really just felt like you guys were having so much fun and, really laughing um, as yourselves. That was amazing. And then there, I just had this moment in my mind of when we were shooting all the cave stuff and the goat was there. And I think it was the first time Kristen met the goat. This was in between takes too, just looking over and just Kristen in costume holding the goat. We're getting, we're setting up the shot. Like, you know, people are doing their jobs past it. And, I, and you just kind of acquainting yourself with the goat and talking <laughs> to the goat very softly. And it just, that, I, I love all those. I mean, I laughed so hard um, and smiled so much when anything was working, which was a lot of the time, but it was the moments in between where it just was like, God, we're getting away with something here. This is so fun. There's there's so much weird shit in this movie and I'm, I love it. <laughs> the, way, the way you describe that Kristen scene makes me think of the SNL skit with Emma Stone as the actress, <laughs> like uh, trying to get into character. That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> this was very funny. Uh, last question, it's the most fun, come on, because this is a time loop movie, right? So. Race the board. You're yourselves. Andy Sandberg's Andy Sandberg. You all, everyone's yourself. What do you do in this time loop? What's something you would really want to go and do first, or at some point during the process that you normally wouldn't do because you're not in the time loop, and there are consequences to what you do. You know, we're asked this a lot, and I do think that, like, the film does such a good job of cycling through like what actually you would try and do. And like my choices might be different than Sarah's, but like one that just came to my mind is that like, I would want to like go to like a beautiful vista and then like run and like, just like leap off the thing. No <laughs> like, 
I'd attempt to play, I don't know, I'd like dive with sharks. I'm very terrified of sharks. I would be like, well, you know, if a shark like kills me, I'll have the memory, but then it's like done. And then maybe I can swim freely with the sharks. It hurts so much. But then it's done. Okay. <laughs> Kristen wants to get eaten by sharks, okay. <laughs> That's totally true. I know, it's fine. Yeah. No, the, the yeah. leaping thing is cool, though. Jump off a cliff. Get yeah. Shark. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I would want to just, like, swim into a whale's mouth and then have it slowly digest me over the course of, like, a year. Yeah. <laughs> but not quite die. I'm just piggybacking on Kristen's thing. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't die. I wouldn't totally drown because there's a little air in the whale, but I'm being slowly broken down by the whale's intestine and stuff. Die. <laughs> oh, would you want to be shot out of the out of the whale, like out of, out the, of the blowhole? Out? Yeah, that'd be a big whale. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, Andy. What do you got? What, what do you really want to do, Andy Samberg? What does Andy Samberg want to do? Um, probably just hella drugs, right? Yeah. <laughs> no that was mine. Just yeah. go, go do for them it. All, see how they all feel, and then know and be done. No addiction because it resets. So your body chemistry doesn't get screwed up. But is it mental? I don't know. I'm not trying to make any broad statements here. Oh. Okay. But probably the drugs is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I would do. I would want to try a lot of drugs as well. I mean, I I, I think everyone would definitely try. A couple. It's a good starting point. Yeah. yeah. Andy Ciara. I'm not the whole movie is I honestly think I would just find a pool with my wife and get a burrito and float in the pool all day. Uh, I know that is not fun or crazy. The first but, uh, thing you do though? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't eventually get to that point? And remember, your wife doesn't know you're in a time loop. Yeah. That's true. I, I, it's, it, I've had a weird thing with, with this movie and time loops is that once I finished, uh, once we finished it, I have like actively tried to never think about time loops again. So therefore, uh, in, in, in this question to me, is, it's, it's, it feels like it's the first time I've, I've ever heard this question, even though I'm sure I've been asked this question before. I know I explored it with, with the movie, but um, I don't know. I, I, yeah, that or I would, I would want to try to find a way to get into space, but I don't, I don't, you can't just steal a, a space shuttle. So. Uh, yeah. Not with that attitude, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Did it, didn't, didn't, Sarah just like learned physics like over a good amount of time. You could totally learn how to steal a space shuttle. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. This is really indicative of Andy Sierra not believing in himself, and I'm, I I want you to believe in yourself. <laughs> you can do like anything. Very true. You need to get, you you need to get stuck in a loop, Sierra, so you can <laughs> go on your own journey. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Feel that spaceship you've always dreamed of. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I am ready for. I am ready for two palm two springs. That would be a great. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for it. Uh, Max, go ahead. What do you want? What do you want to do? I think sp space space sparked something. There was that uh, there was that jetpack man by uh, LAX like last month. I think I'd find the jetpack and, uh, and and try to get up up to the moon or amongst yeah. the stars or something. And and the drugs too. The drugs. Is <laughs> Maybe both together. Maybe on. Yeah, yeah. Bath salts. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh man, talk about talk about a group. You guys are amazing. Your film is incredible. Listen, and as I'm saying this genuinely as a film awards editor at Variety now, I have power. I, this film needs to be considered for serious awards contention. I've written, one of the first things I wrote here was Palm Springs Best Picture. Let's talk about it because it's something that it should be genuinely considered, I believe, in film in all facets, all genres. This movie does so much. It says a lot. I'm a big fan. So, thank you, man. That's an thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, Montclair people, thanks for joining us today. And then uh, make sure to go see Palm Springs on Hulu.